Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to make this video where I'm going to go over the React Query library and throughout the video I'm going to give you guys some examples to why you would want to use this library, why um, this would improve your code, your um, how organized your code is and, um, and how to actually implement the library and how to actually make it so that your application is fetching data in the best way possible. Before we actually get into the video, if you guys could leave a like, I would really appreciate it. It would massively help push the video to more people and make the channel grow. I'm putting a lot of effort into the channel. So if you guys could help me grow, reach the 10K subscriber mark, which is something that I've been wanting for like a long time, I would be really, really happy about it. So yeah, that's basically it. Let's get into the tutorial. So as you can see right here, we already have a, a React application kind of um, built. And the reason why I built this um, before getting to the tutorial is because I want to show you guys um, a clear example to why, why you would want to use React Query in your application. You can see that this is a very simple React application. I'm actually going to come over here. And this is what I built. Um, it's just a simple web page, which when you refresh the page, it generates, it fetches data from an API and shows like the image of a random dog. So it's using a public API, which I think it's called like um, dog um, photo, something like that. I'm going to put the link for the API in the description if you want to check that out. But as you can see, it's just, just fetching data, um, fetching images um, of random dogs, which are really cool, as you can see. And yeah, it's pretty simple. So the way I built this is pretty standard for most people who worked in React. Um, you usually want to be able to have three states. One, to check if it's currently loading for data. One, to check if there's been any errors. And one, to store the data that you receive. So you can see over here, when I refresh the page, while it's making the API request, it appears like it shows the thing loading, right? And it shows every single time while it's loading for the API request to be done. So that is a Boolean that is stored in a state called is loading. And then we have the error, which in the case, if, if for example, we put a wrong API over here. I forgot to put... Um, uh, the O and the N for JSON, which is um, part of the URL, you'll see that it should say um, error, try again, because what I did is down here, I said that if there's any errors, I just want to display the message error, try again. And if I put the O N, you'll see that it should fetch the data correctly now, as you can see. So what happens is this is kind of the standard. Um, we're using a use effect, so that whenever we want to fetch the data, we um, have this function called fetch data. Uh, it basically sets error to false and loading to true. And then it tries to fetch the data using axios. As you can see right here, I'm using axios, but you can use fetch, same thing. Um, and it tries to fetch the data. If it doesn't, if, if, it, if it isn't able to fetch the data, then you set error to true and you don't set the data because there was some error. But if it was able to fetch the data, you just set data to tr like to the data that you receive, uh, which is the response to data. And down here, you set loading to false, meaning that you finished loading the data and you are, have actually um, been able to receive the data. And down here, we just have um, some conditional rendering where we ask if there's any errors, I want to show error, try again. Um, if is loading is true, which means it's it's asking, like it's fetching the data, we just want to display uh, an H1 saying loading. And else, if none of those are, are true, then we know that we received the data and we just want to display an image with the SRC equal to data.url. So the API, if you take a look at the documentation, it just returns an object. And one of the values for that object is the URL, which contains the URL for the image. So this is what we're displaying over here. It's just the image of a random dog. And they're really cute, as you can see. So why would we actually want to implement React Query into this application when we are able to make this work? We're making our application work without using react query well let's think about this this code like well, we're probably gonna have to fetch and handle data several times in a large application right and this piece of logic over here it's quite annoying um, we're using a use effect hook then we also have to create a function inside of it which is that it isn't actually necessary but um, since we're, we're trying to uh, make it so that we receive the data asynchronously we're using an async function so that's kind of the idea um, but in theory we're only using three states and we're using a use effect right so would it be easier to just like condense all of this logic into a pre-made hook and the answer for that is in my opinion yes it would be a lot easier and also we don't have a very like stable way of um, controlling our states or um, caching our data. So what React Query does is it manages everything for you and it creates this um, pre-made hooks 
um, there's mainly the use query hook and the use mutation hook, which is pretty similar to um, if you've ever worked with GraphQL before, and I've made videos on this in the past, um, how Apollo Client, which is a famous library for GraphQL, um, handles their API requests. They have both um, the use mutation and the use query hooks, which basically represents um, if you want to make a get request, for example, then you call the use query hook. And if you want to add something to an API, like make a post request, a put request, or a delete request, you use the use mutation hook. So in this video, I'm going to change all of this logic over here, so that it will be implemented with react query, and you guys will see exactly what is the difference. So let's do this right now, I'm going to open this up, and you'll see that I'm going to install the library react query. So I'm going to write yarn add react query. And if you're using npm, um, same thing, just npm install react query. So while it is installing, let's, let's just come up here over at the top. And let's just import um, from react query, um, query over here. And let's import initially the use query hook um, over here. And this is the hook that we're going to be using. So in order to um, condense all this logic into um, a very simple like two lines of code is you can basically just delete everything like legit just delete absolutely everything i'll just keep this um url for the api over here let me just put it over here so i don't, don't forget but literally delete every single thing over here you can see that our code is a lot smaller now so literally to, to make the same thing work as before all we have to do is we just have to say const then set this equal to use query like this then first param or first argument over here, just a name, a random name that you want um, to represent this query. So we can call this um, fetching um, dogs, something like this. Um, or I actually just call it dogs. Um, basically, you can give it a name that you want It's just for um, organization purposes, right? It's just a query key, as you can see over here, so that you can access that later if you want to. But then you have to put how are you actually going to fetch this data? And this is when um, it comes into place, uh, the fact that use query or react query is not a replacement for either the fetch API or the X use um, library. Basically, you can use either fetch or X use over here to make the API request. And what the react query library does is it handles all the state management behind it. So what we can do is over here, we can um, actually create a function an anonymous function, which just uh, gets the data from X use. So we're going to copy the URL that we had over here, we're going to delete this over here, and let's just paste it over here. So that we're still um, actually making the API request. And this is basically it. When we put this function over here, what happens is this is what this is going to be returned and use query knows that whatever data is returned from this, um, it's going to handle it. And this structure it into the following variables. So with react query, there's many things you can destructure from this hook. One of the things is the is loading, which we, we created before, then also is error, then maybe actually, we can also get the error directly, right? Um, which is great, because we can actually get any errors that is displayed any error messages. And then we can also get the data, which is amazing. And there's many different things we can actually get. Um, if we want, we can actually get like, um, is success is idle is fetching, there's many variables and states that we can access, because this hook is pretty complete. So um, this is great, because now we don't need to create three different states. And we don't need to have a use effect, because this will run immediately when you re render your page. So what can we do now? First of all, since we have access to the error over here, let's just ask if error, and we can say something like error, and we can display here the error like this. However, error is an object which contains some properties, one of them is the message. So um, if there's any error messages, we'll know immediately because it's going to display over here. And as you can see, this is basically done. Um, we don't have anything else here. Like we, we don't even need the use effect or the use state hook, because we're not using them anymore. And if we save this, and we go to our API, or our project, you'll see that it's actually not working. Um, you'll see that it will say no um, error, no query clients um, set use query client provi provider to set one. And the reason for that is because it is actually one of the first things you have to do, which is you need to wrap your whole um, kind of your whole AP, like your whole application with something called a query provider. Uh, and to do that, what I like to do is you can actually come to the index.js over here, 
or if you're if you have many pages many components you can do this in the app.js as well but in the index.js what you can do is you can come over here and you can actually just import um, query client like this and I'm gonna actually say from react query over here and I also want to import the um, how can I say the query client provider over here and by the way you if you are if you have other components that you're rendering uh, and you want to put this over here inside of the app.js it's totally like correct to do that I'm just doing it on the index.js because my whole logic is written inside of the app.js and I didn't create a different component to to do all of this so if you have a different component then I recommend putting it on the app.js but what you do now is you need to actually create um, a query client so to do that you can just come here and say query client like this inside equal to new query client um, like this no not provider client and this is just standard it's just saying that we, we we can just wrap like our whole application around this and it will have access to all of this so it's similar as i mentioned before to how you work in apollo client if you've ever used that graphql library before and over here we have to pass a client and that client will just be the query client that we just created and this should make everything work if we refresh this page you'll see that now it doesn't give us any error and it doesn't display any images which is weird let's try again um, it's not displaying. Let's go to our console and let's see why this is happening. And the reason why it's actually not working is because um, the, the way you structure the variable data changed. So remember before data was just the response from the access request. So it was just like whatever we get as a JSON from the API request. However, if we console log data right now, let me just console log data so you guys can see. Um, the data, the variable data, the state variable data that we receive from red query actually has some other properties. So if I come over here, you can see I refreshed and it console logged whatever we got back. And it has the following stuff. It has a property called config. It has a property called data inside of it. And it also has like everything related to the request. So if we want to access the URL, we can just say data.data.url instead of data.url like we were doing before. So I know that sounds confusing, but that's just how they structure their objects. So this is what we have to do. And if I refresh, you'll see that this is exactly what is happening. Um, you can refresh the page. It's working perfectly. And that's just part of the API. Um, you can see... <laughs> Um, pictures are appearing, which means it is working. And the thing is, the code for um, this is a lot smaller and a lot like more organized than if you weren't using this. So this is definitely a benefit if you want to use some sort of uh, data fetching library. I definitely recommend React Query. I have made a video in the past on the SWR library if you want to check that out. It's pretty similar. However, um, I, I prefer React Query for many different reasons. If you guys have like any, any questions, just put it on the comments down below. And just quick before we actually get out of the video, if you're interested in um, also creating mutations, um, just like adding stuff, create like making a post request or um, a put request or a delete request. Um, it's pretty similar as well. Um, I'm not gonna actually sh gonna show you guys because this I can't make a post request this public API. However, to do that, you can just come here and import the use mutation hook like this. And all you have to do is you just have to come over here and say const, then pass a function over here. So I can call it like, um, I don't know, create user something like that and we set it equal to use mutation and here i can just grab some sort of variable so like whatever the user that we want to mutate we want to add and then we just say that we want to make a post request like this x use dot post and then instead of here we can put the url to our api so i'm just going to write like api url dot com slash users something like that right i'm just making this up but then over here you can pass the object that you want to add over here so i can pass for example users right um user 
And that's how you actually work with the use mutation hook. If you're interested in more videos on React Query, I can definitely make them. Can you? I can use React Query on a series that I'm going to make in the future if you guys are interested. But that's basically it. I really wanted to make this video because uh, I think this topic and this library is really interesting. So if you have any comments, then leave the comments down below. I can definitely help you out. And leave a like and subscribe if you are interested in the channel, if you like the video. Because I'm posting three times a week and I would really appreciate it if you guys could help me grow the channel. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.